This is the Galaxy A54 5G, Samsung's latest entry in its A-series lineup. So last year's A53 was one of the best mid-range smartphones one could buy. This year, Samsung updated the design by taking inspiration from its flagship Galaxy S23 lineup and upgraded the cameras too. That's all great, but is it worth the asking price? I mean, the prices just keep going up. My name is Godwin J and here's my review of the Galaxy A54 5G. So we start with the box. My unit comes with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of onboard storage in awesome graphite. You can also get the A54 in awesome lime, violet and white with 128GB of onboard storage paired with either 6GB of RAM or 8GB of RAM. If you're looking forward to a special unboxing experience, you're out of luck on this one. It's just a phone and a USB-C charging cable. No charging brick. Thanks Apple. When you hold the A54 for the first time in your hands, it surprisingly has some heft to it. It doesn't feel or look cheap at all, compared to last year's Galaxy A53 which felt light and had a plastic frame and back. The A54 comes with a rounded metallic looking frame sandwiched between Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and the back. It's also got the same camera design language as the S23 series, now that's good. On the front. The A54 is rocking the 6.4 inch 1080p Super AMOLED 120Hz screen. So yes, it's 0.1 inches smaller than last year's model, but it's brighter, able to hit 1000 nits in bright sunlight. The colors are vivid, viewing angles are awesome, and the blacks are really black. It's a lovely screen as expected of AMOLED. If you pre-ordered it, and Samsung has a bunch of great deals that they tend to throw in that charger anyway, but it will be a 25 watt charger, not the same. Moving on. But you know deep down it can't all be perfect. It's a mid-range phone after all and the large bezels and distracting silver ring around the front facing camera constantly remind you of that fact. Speaking of cameras, there's three on the back. Samsung thankfully got rid of the depth sensor this time, opting instead for a 50 megapixel main sensor with OIS, a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 5 megapixel macro. The colors from the 50 megapixel main camera are pleasing, vivid as always, the autofocus is always on point, and it's pretty good at getting skin tones right. So portrait mode on the other hand with objects is a hit or miss. Sometimes it gets the focus right and the cutout is smooth and precise, some other times it's all over the place. But with subjects, with humans, it's always perfect, the cutout is always on point. There is no dedicated telephoto lens, as a result, the 50 megapixel main camera doubles as a 2x telephoto camera, which is fine, but I'd rather have a telephoto lens than the macro, which is completely pointless. I tried using it a couple of times and the minimum focus distance is just too low. The ultra wide on the other hand gets a downgrade in quality but it's decent at 12 megapixels still able to produce good enough photos usable photos in daylight uh, with good contrast and sharpness um, but other than that uh, once you zoom in everything falls apart the audio from the camera is really good so this is what it looks like recorded under harsh sunlight at 60 frames per second full HD mm -hmm. so testing stabilization and audio while I'm outside as I walk now you can still feel my footsteps the look of my footsteps in the video so I'll switch to super steady mode so with super steady mode a lot of the shake is eliminated completely and it looks it looks way smoother the shakes are not as bad as before and the shot still seems very stabilized recording yeah <laughs> so from the videos you've seen there's clearly a downside to using super steady mode because it uses the ultra wide camera to record the footage but crops in slightly to help with stabilization 
details are washed off or lost in the process, unfortunately, and that's just the downside of the camera system. Other than that, the 50 megapixel camera is quite fine. You just have to be super careful. This one, you definitely need a gimbal for it. And this is 60 FPS using the front facing camera. So quality wise, it seems pretty decent. The selfie camera is still 32 megapixels, just like the A53. It struggles when it's facing the sun, when there's harsh light facing the camera lens. It tries to brighten up everything. You lose a bit of contrast. It just makes everything a little bit flat. Other than that, it does pretty okay, especially with skin tones. The selfie camera can also be used to unlock the phone. I find it very convenient and fast to use, but the optical fingerprint scanner is a more secure option. It's not the fastest, but it's quite accurate. Meanwhile, on the software side, the A54 5G comes preloaded with Android 13 and One UI 5.1. Technically, it means you have most features that the Galaxy S23 have, except a few high-end features like Samsung DeX. The A54 5G is also eligible for Samsung's four-year major OS upgrades and five years of security upgrades. That ensures that the A54 will be supported for quite a while. It probably won't get every new Android feature or One UI feature down the road, but at least it'll get the major ones or a good amount of them. Mostly because the chip has to keep up, and that's where we get into the performance of this phone. The A54 comes with Samsung's Exynos 1380, and technically it's supposed to be an upgrade over the A53's Exynos 1280, but for the asking price, it's not really obvious or evident. It's not showing that upgrade. It's not showing that speed. It still stutters from time to time despite having 120 hertz. It lags a little bit, especially in the camera. When you try to take shots, the shutter lag is terrible. So the question becomes, is it a problem of the chip or Samsung isn't optimizing One UI well enough to take advantage of the power of the new chip? The best we could hope for is that with upcoming software updates, it'll get better and smoother. But for now, out the box, it's still a slightly jittery experience. Um, from time to time, you'd encounter some lag, you'd encounter some stutters on the UI, and like I said, the shutter lag on the camera app, it's, it's not great. On the bright side, the one place the Exynos 1380 redeems itself is in gaming. Games like Call of Duty, Asphalt 9 perform pretty well without any stutter lag or issues. But as expected, performance will take a dip after long hours of gaming, which is expected of a major phone, especially because it starts to get hot and then throttle. Another area the Exynos 1380 excels at is connectivity. There's 5G support and it also comes bundled with Wi-Fi 6. This is something you find mostly on the high-end flagship devices like the S23s. Samsung advertised the A54 5G as a two-day phone. And in my own experience, you could say it's close. I was able to end a full day with at least 30 to 40% of charge left. And that can definitely carry on to the next day, but I'll be needing to charge it as soon as I go out. For light users, yes, it could actually do two days. But for me, I am a moderate user, not necessarily heavy. Um, light gaming, music, a lot of music. Um, videos here and there from time to time and a lot of chatting and if you do a lot of that especially when you consider TikTok and social media definitely would just last a day. Also as advertised it is capable of fast charging paired up with the 25 watt charger and I have that charger I tried it. So in my experience from 10% down it takes at least 40 minutes to charge to full which is also not bad. Then is if you compare it in a world where the Chinese manufacturers are able to do 60 watt charging, 120 watt charging, then you begin to look at this as uh, not such a great phone, more of a compromise especially given the price that it's coming in at. So yeah, it's um it's a choice at the end of the day. You take it or leave it, but the thing is we expect better, especially when you're releasing a phone in this crowded mid-range segment. There's a lot of great choices out there. So this makes it a lot harder for the average buyer to really pick this, especially when it can get something else that will charge way faster. So this all brings us back to my first question. Is the Galaxy A54 5G worth the price? I think the upgrades to the design and added features justify a price increase. The camera is much improved, especially the autofocus and night mode. And the brighter display and variable refresh rate push it closer to flagship levels of quality. But the downsides, such as the big bezels, the not so great battery life, and lackluster performance hurt the Galaxy A54's appeal to buyers who are already spoiled for choice in the very crowded mid-range segments. 
What are we wait, wait. There's, there's a bright side. Uh, and that's if you're willing to wait a few more months and you're budget conscious, definitely the price will come down. And once it does, that will be the best time to buy one. 